place of silent prayer. All my thoughts are perfectly clear. It's up to me what music I I can choose what I feel. Yeah, I can choose what I feel. I'm gonna let the joy wash over me. Gonna let the joy wash over me. Gonna let the joy wash my worry away. Gonna let the joy wash over me. Gonna celebrate this precious day. Gonna let the love fall out of me. Gonna let the love wash my worry away. Gonna let the love flow out of me. Gonna celebrate this precious day. Gonna let the laughter fall out of me. Gonna let the laughter wash my worry away. Gonna let the laughter fall out of me. Gonna celebrate this precious day. Clap. Gonna let the joy wash over me. Gonna let the joy wash my worry away. Gonna let the joy wash over me. Gonna celebrate this precious day. I'm gonna celebrate this precious day. I'm gonna celebrate this precious day.
light of the world and you know we won't fail power within us is one with the power out there there's more than enough to go around if we're willing to share it fall and fall in love I am falling Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living in Santa Rosa. And thank you to Sky Nelson and Brett and Nick for that beautiful song. Um, those songs are all on Sky's CD. You can find that in our wonderful bookstore, which I believe I haven't seen it yet, but I believe is now fall themed. Hmm. So be sure and check that out on your way out today. I am Reverend Russ Legear. I am your assistant minister, and I'm so glad to be with you all. And if you are joining us for the first time, we especially want to welcome you here, especially if it's the first time in a long time. And please know that your children are very welcome here as well. They can sit with you here in the sanctuary. We have our family room back in the corner there, and we have our children's table outside where there may be coloring pages for the children for the children, because <laughs> um, I also see adults there too. That's fine. No, if you want to color there and you're an adult, you can color to your heart's content and we'll even post them up on the board over there. Um, and very soon we're working to bring back our nursery as well. And you'll hear um, an invitation for that at the end of service today. Also, thank you so much to our wonderful live stream viewers. We are so grateful that you're sharing this time with us here online. And live streamers on Facebook and YouTube, if you do love watching us online, please consider clicking that shiny share button on the stream and sharing with your friends and family so that we can help to um, have other people find our wonderful teaching here at the center. And if you're wondering what's going on at the center, and let me tell you, there's quite a lot going on and there's even more to come, um, you can always find out what's going on here on our website, cslsr.org. And there you'll find our Sunday bulletin by clicking on the photo of the old-fashioned typewriter. We all remember what those look like, right? You know, it's, it's 21st century, but, you know, <laughs> it, 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 it's easy to find. So um, that bulletin, um, Alan Yeager, our um, communications officer, he goes through um, everything that's going on throughout the week and makes sure it's all in that Sunday bulletin. So it's your best resource to find out what's going on here if you would like to get plugged in beyond our Sunday services. Also, yes, I know, I know he, he works very hard on that. We're so grateful for that. Also, if you're wondering what we're all about, what uh, we practice, what we teach here at the center, um, we have a pamphlet at our information table called uh, What We Believe, and that's sort of a mini overview of everything here that we teach, what we're all about, and um, it's a really great way if you're kind of wondering, hmm, I wonder, I, I'm new here, I, I don't quite know what they're teaching, well, that's a good way to get plugged in because um, it's got this wonderful summary in it. Um, if you're online, you can also send an email to Linda Hanson and our chief operations officer, and she will um, send you a PDF copy of that um, over email. All right, at the Center for Spiritual Living Santa Rosa, we are motivated by a vision of a healthy, loving world. It is known as the global vision, and it calls us to imagine a world that works for everyone. And we envision a world in which Resources are valued, cared for, and grown, and where there is generous and continuous sharing of these resources. 
And we follow this vision through the five core spiritual practices of our teaching. Would you please read them with me? Spiritual study, affirmative prayer, meditation, selfless service, and spiritual circulation. And so I know that somewhere between the music, the meditation, the prayer, our practices, and Dr. Edwards' message today is exactly what you need to experience for the next step of your spiritual unfoldment. You are so very welcome here. Now, please enjoy some music before our short time of silent contemplation. In this very moment, that one presence of life is fully abiding, holding, expressing, unfolding throughout all of creation. It is every moment whole, animating all that there is the one source called by many names, 
present everywhere. This one spirit of life is right here in the very life of my life, the breath of my breath. It is in every part of my being. It has created me out of itself. And so I know it as the very life of each one here, each one hearing this word. For it is that full expression everywhere, knowing, being, expressing everything all the time. So I open to this awareness right now, knowing it is the source of all, unlimited. It lives as a vastness of being, ever-present, undivided, right here. It is the life of all life. And in this knowing, I know that all is truly well beyond circumstances, beyond thoughts, beyond this and that. There is just this holy moment. Oh, I am so grateful to know this truth. I am so grateful to answer this call home right now and recognizing this blessed presence. I simply let go. I let this be. And so it is. Amen. Good morning. I'm Ruth Barnhart, a minister here at the center. Please join me in reading this morning's affirmation. I am always swimming in an ocean of infinite abundance. And so it is. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant and gorgeous, talented and sure? But you're a child of God. Why would you play small to make others feel secure? born to manifest the glory of within our deepest fear is not our weakness our deepest fear is our strength it's our light not our darkness that frightens us to silence and keeps our shadows tall. But there is nothing big in playing small. Da -da, da -da -da. La -da. As we let our own light shine, unconsciously we give our friends the strength to do the same. And when we free ourselves from fear, others get permission to love themselves again. We were born to manifest the glory of within. Our deepest fear is not our weakness. Our deepest fear is our strength. And it's 
It's our light, not our darkness, that frightens us to silence and keeps our shadows tall. But there is nothing big in playing small. And it's not just in me. And it's not just in some of us. It's in everyone you meet. There's not a single one of us that isn't fabulous. Our deepest fear is not our weakness. Our deepest fear is our strength. It's our light, not our darkness, that frightens us to silence and keeps our shadows tall. But there is nothing big playing small there is nothing big in playing in playing small Thank you so much, Sky, Brett, Nick, and thank you for being here this morning. Good morning, beautiful people of the Center for Spiritual Living. Hello. Hi. We're, I know we're lulled into a state of meditation. I know. Well, it's a good thing. You know, there's a lot going on in our world that brings us to that sober place. Um, I'm thinking about the Hurricane Ian and all the places being affected by weather. I'm thinking about war in Ukraine and um, the women's rights demonstrations in Iran and across the world. Oh, and the water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi. And then there's also power um, crises, energy crises in Puerto Rico, also affected by weather, and Haiti too. There's a lot going on. I think of the author and poet and psychoanalyst, uh, Clarissa Pinkola Estes. She wrote these words. In any dark time, there is a tendency to veer towards fainting over how much is wrong or unmended in the world. Do not focus on that. You know, I keep that quote close to my heart when I, I feel overwhelmed by the world. I keep it close to me as a reminder to be mindful of what am I focusing on and to turn and veer, as she says, intentionally to things that can be helpful, like generosity and loving kindness, not to pretend that there's nothing going on in the world, that there's nothing to do, not to deny the pain and suffering or loss in the world. It's just the opposite. It's to be able to face it without fainting and being overwhelmed by it. So this refocus towards generosity and loving kindness is very helpful because these attitudes of mind, generosity and loving kindness, release our abundant and natural ability to care for each other, to love each other, to help each other, and to rebuild the world. I don't do well when I'm overwhelmed by everything that has to be done. And so at times like these, it's important for me to not shut down and do nothing. It's important for me to make sure I care and I share and I love 
and I connect. And it's important for me not to underestimate the power of loving kindness and generosity at times like this. The rest of that quote from Clarissa goes like this. Any small thing, any small calm thing that one soul can do to help another soul, to assist some portion of this suffering world, will help immensely. It is not given to us to know which acts or by whom will cause the critical mass to tip towards an enduring good. <sighs> oh, I resonate with that. And it encourages me to keep on doing my part. Do any small, calm thing. Do it. And trust that it is helpful, that it may even be the thing that tips the balance to an enduring good that causes a critical mass to shift. So it's a reminder to me to turn and to refocus my mind on that everywhere present nature of the creative energy of life and to draw upon it so that I can do my part to share and care and connect and love and support and to remember that I may not know what little thing I do, what its impact on the world is. Our topic today is swimming in the infinite ocean. And here the infinite ocean is a phrase used to describe that everywhere present creative energy of life I just mentioned, that you and I are made of and that we can draw upon so that we can be part of our world's solutions. And the spiritual practices that Reverend Russ mentioned that we read together this morning, those are about unpacking and dissolving any blocks that stand between us and that creative energy of life. And it turns out that some of those blocks are in our own Awareness. We call that in our teaching consciousness. I'll give you some examples. For example, if I have a consciousness of hurriedness or impatience, that mindset can make it difficult for me to experience the abundance of love and intimacy that is available in personal interactions. I'm too busy. When I'm rushing, I may miss the small details that make ordinary things extraordinary, exquisitely so. When I don't have time, I may miss the nuances in a conversation or in a movie or wherever that could lead to an insight that I haven't had before that might be part of the solution. When I'm impatient... I'm not as abundant as I might be. I'm not swimming in the infinite ocean of possibilities. I'm rushing through it. Or if I have, for example, an, a consciousness of comparison, that mindset could make it difficult for me to value and appreciate what I have and who I really am. You know, the consciousness of comparison in its worst form may keep me always needing more. Because when I compare myself to others and what they have, sometimes I focus then on what I don't have, and then I'm not as abundant as I might be because I'm swimming in an ocean of less than. Or another example, if I have a consciousness of waste. That's a mindset that can make it difficult for me to really understand the role I play among the community of beings, how I interact, and how my actions impact, how my use of resources contributes to the way the world actually is. 
I may even see things and places and peoples just as expendable. I may not care about the environment. And when I'm wasteful, I'm not tuned into abundance as I might be. I'm not swimming in an ocean of infinite connections and oneness. I'm swimming in the ocean of me. Hmm. Another way of saying all of this is that some of the problems that we face in society, not all of them, but some of them, many of them, have to do with how we show up in the world, how we see the world, and how we interpret our place in the world and our perspective. And then through spiritual practices, prayer, meditation, selfless service, spiritual study, and circulation, we can make adjustments in our awareness, the adjustments that are necessary to help us, as she says, veer, I love that word, turn away from fainting, away from selfishness, away from waste, and towards courage and connection and compassion and sharing and loving kindness. Now, each one of us has our own challenge when it comes to experience that state of being in the flow of life's abundant creative energy and possibilities. We've each got our own tailor-made set of challenges feeling that. And here are some typical blocks that you may or may not experience. Some people are givers but they haven't learned how to ask for what they want. And that's where they're blocked. And even if something is offered to them, they have difficulty receiving it. Other people can't give easily at all. They may be focused on how to get for whatever reason. They may have some good reasons. They have a problem, a challenge with receiving. Some people do know how to receive, but the way they receive feels more like taking. Some people can ask for what they need, but the way they ask makes it difficult for other people to give to them. And some people have learned all the strategies of circulation, giving regularly, asking beautifully, receiving graciously, but still, they feel stuck. They don't feel like they're in an ocean of infinite possibility. They are, well, anchored to something, tethered to something that keeps them back. And oftentimes, that something can be resentment. Now, if any of these sound like they are close to an area of your stuckness, if you have any, then I invite you to our Wednesday evening service in person. We're bringing it back in person, starting this Wednesday, right here. Reverend Russ is going to do the mu music meditation, and I'm going to talk about these attitudes of mind giving, receiving, asking, and forgiveness, and what part they play in our experience of being in the flow of life's creative energy and possibilities, because we want that flow to be flowing so that we can step up and help the world. That's Wednesday. Today, I want to talk about yet another potential block and how to unblock it. Sometimes in life, we may feel blocked from our abundance because we may be using money and possessions to place a value on our self-worth. Now, there's nothing wrong with possessions and wealth. It's, it's just not the kind of abundance we're talking about when we talk about the ocean of infinite possibility. Today, what we are talking about is the abundance of things that are in our heart and soul, in yours and in mine, that we are born with, those things that make us essentially who we are. And I like to call them our superpowers 
And they are, you've heard them already, loving kindness and generosity. And these are the two attitudes of mind that when invoked, open the door to the experience of abundant living. They unblock stuckness. <sighs> However, we live in a society that oftentimes measures a person's value and worth by what they possess, by their wealth. You know, we've been challenged for the past two and a half years by a, a pandemic. And as a result, and you've heard me mention this, we've had a deficit in revenue. And last month was the first month that we ended in the black. Do you know how easy it is to connect a deficit in revenue with failure and loss of self-worth? That quick. After all, the net worth of an individual or an organization is based on their dollars and cents, says society. So I'm in that. And I'm turning, I'm veering, I'm turning my consciousness in a different direction to, to make a dent again and again and again in that myth that you and I are worth what we have, what we possess, what we have accumulated, that somehow that is the proof of our value. I'm turning to the self within which is the place where I intersect with the universe and with you, that we share in common the place from which my and your self-worth actually comes. I'm turning to it to renew my confidence in its ability to express itself as generosity and loving kindness, and I'm turning to it so that I can trust that, those superpowers to build strong connections and to produce solutions, and to provide for us a pathway forward. Deborah Price is a wealth coach, and she coaches individuals and organizations about their money, and she wrote this. By basing our lives on the pursuits of money and material gain, we often neglect the self. And its inherent longing for spiritual connection. We have become ensnared in the net, caught by the money trap. I believe we will not escape until we value our spiritual being above money and material gain. We need to create a new paradigm for living, one that breaks the patterns of the past. Oh, wow. Breaking the patterns of the past. It's a lifelong journey. So, this is how it applies for me. When I catch myself, and I do this, I catch myself measuring my self-worth by money or the lack of it. I notice that in those times, I may be devaluing myself because I'm, I'm using what I have as a measure of what I am. And then I, I know that in those moments, it's time for me to actively turn to those two superpowers, generosity and loving kindness, and invoke them and use them and put them into action. And then I can begin to measure myself in another way, a new paradigm, through the way I help others to what value I bring to other people's lives, one at a time. And you know, anybody can do this. It's like doing a re-inventory. Try it. Do an accounting of your, call them living assets, if you don't like the word superpowers. Do an inventory of the things that make you feel good about who you are rather than what you have. And if you're thinking, the list is rather small, Here's the good news. You and I can start to add to our living assets today, right away. You and I can begin to do beautiful things for other people to rebuild the heart of the world. 
Do you remember the movement Random Acts of Kindness? They used to have a bulletin board where people could post their stories. And this is Jackie's story, and I copied and saved it because I was so moved by it. One day, Jackie writes, I was in the grocery store waiting for my turn in line. This older lady who had two gallons of milk and a rose said she had lost her money and could not afford her purchases. I sat for a moment um, thinking that this was a good opportunity to give to someone else. So I asked someone to go get her and bring her back to the line and I purchased the items for her. No one really knew who I was, which kind of made this even more special for me. And I said to her, I hope that rose is for yourself, she said, smiling. No, uh, it, one of our hospital junior volunteers made volunteer of the year, and this is for her. I was happy to bring a smile to this woman's face and to the people behind me. It felt good knowing I helped even in a small way. My son, who was with me, asked me why I did it. And I said, because it's good to set an example for others. My smi son smiled and hugged me and said, I love you, Mom. I want to be kind like you too. And that, Jackie says, one, was one of the most special days of my life. I keep Jackie's story close to my heart also because it reminds me that when I am stuck or worried financially, there is something I know to do. I look for ways to open my heart to the abundant expression of generosity that is naturally there that wants to come out and do something even if it's small. To get my mind back into the flow of the infinite ocean of life, sometimes what I do when I'm out eating, um, I pay anonymously for somebody else's dinner. And I love doing that. I prey on unsuspecting families <laughs> and pay their bill. And the, w this example is from, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. There was one particular family eating, and they, were, they had like four kids with them. I don't know if they were all their kids, but the two young parents were just so busy. <laughs> well, you know what it's like. And so I, I paid for their bill without them knowing, and I watched when the waiter came over and said their bill was paid for by an anonymous person, and I'll never forget the look on their faces as they looked around the restaurant, <laughs> wondering what had happened. Last week, because I'm in it, you know, I did it again. I was in a restaurant, but this time I forgot to ask the wait staff not to identify me. And so it wasn't anonymous, and I, I paid for the dinner for somebody I know from our center, and they texted me afterwards and said, you know, we're sitting here with tears streaming down our faces because we both realized that no one has ever done that for us in our whole lives. And reading that text, I felt my whole being begin to open and release the blocks and to expand into an infinite ocean of possibilities and abundance. Another post on the... Um, Random Acts of Kindness Bulletin, and this is Whitney's story. My teacher was waiting in line to pay his admission fee for his family when he noticed the family in front of him. He could tell they didn't have much money. He could see the joy in the kids' faces. Possibly it meant that they didn't go to these kind of places very often. When the family got to the ticket booth, the man, presumably the father, ended up being short about $30 for the entrance fee. Somehow, he thought it was cheaper than it actually was. Seeing the disappointment in the mother's and the father's faces, my teacher drew two 20s and threw them on the floor behind the man and tapped his shoulder and said, excuse me, sir, but I think you dropped some money. <laughs> the man looked at him and just smiled and picked up the money and said, Thank you. I have never looked up to a man more than I have to him, my teacher. I never see him anymore, and he probably would never remember me if he saw me, but I will always remember the feeling I had when I saw him do that. It's important for me to keep in mind that there are many ways to express generosity and loving kindness. There are physical acts, 
There are spiritual acts. For example, when I take the time to do what the opening quote Estes suggested, to create an attitude of calm, one that allows me to remember my connectedness to all life, and from that state, love rises up. That's when love instructs me how to be, what to do, how to act, how to speak. And that, too, is a gift of kindness to the world. And not only that, I truly believe that thinking kindly about others and about the world, it may not be a substitute for act action, but thinking kindly about others has a beautiful, beneficial power and effect all of its own. And I can think of no better way to say it than in the words of Hugh Prather. Who really knows the effect of one happy thought? Is it possible that it circles the globe, finding entry into any open heart, encouraging and giving hope in some unseen way? I am convinced that it does. For whenever I am truly loving, I feel the warmth and presence of the like-minded, a growing family whose strength lies in their gentleness and whose message is in their treatment of others. I believe it is good and right to be happy, and I know from experience that it is the only way I can personally be kind. So in this way, the pursuit of happiness or joy is in service to kindness, and kindness opens our heart to express generously to the world. I invite you to take a breath in with me and to exhale into a moment of quiet contemplation. And letting the next breath you take be a little deeper than the one before. And with this movement of breath in the body, the movement in consciousness returns us to the activity of the room. And this would be the time in our service where we pass the basket to receive our donations. We have long since changed the way we receive financial support. Since the pandemic started, we have baskets at the entrance, and there are all kinds of ways for you to donate, including text to give. There is a number on the screen, and also if you want to pick up a card on the way out, you can. Or you can visit our website, cslsr.org, and look at the donate button, um, add slash donate, and you'll get straight there if you want to, to find out the different ways you can contribute. Each year we partner with 12 nonprofit partners. Last month our nonprofit partner for September was Stewards of the Coasts and Redwoods, and we send a small portion of the donations we re receive to our nonprofit partners. They send to us their deep gratitude and appreciation for our support as one of the 2022 nonprofit partners. Stewards of the Coast and Redwoods partners with the Russian River sector of California State Parks to promote, restore, and protect the resources of our parks, including Armstrong Redwood State Natural Reserve and Austin Creek State Recreation Area and Sonoma Coast State Park. You know, it's been a year since the reopening of Armstrong Woods, and after all the damage is done by the Wall Bridge, the Wall Bridge Fire in 2022, they've been busy. They have rehabilitated existing trails and established new ones and put up fencing and new picnic tables, as well as taken care of all the trees that were felled during the fire. 
It is heartwarming for me to know that when I contribute to CSLSR, that some part of my gift goes to do good work in the world through our nonprofit partners like Stewards of the Coast and Redwoods. So I invite you to keep that in mind when you contribute to our center. Thank you for being here today. And now Reverend Rust has some community announcements for us. Welcome up, Reverend. Thank you so much, Dr. Edward, and I'm going to try and clip through these because our first announcement, and especially for everybody who's here in person, you may have noticed that today is our Sharing Our Bounty event, and it's the last Sharing Our Bounty event of the year. Don't worry, we're going to have other events for you to get to in just a moment, but um, be sure to check that out on your way out. We've got all kinds of baked treats and goodies and produce and wonderful things for you to take home, and don't worry if you didn't bring anything, you can still take home whatever you'd like to take home with you. Um, and also be sure to check out the art by Bob Hart and Marcella Ford on your way out to that too because they've got some beautiful art in our social hall. As Dr. Edward mentioned, our Wednesday evening service is back. And um, you can join Dr. Edward and myself this Wednesday at 7 p.m. here at the center. We'll be right here in the sanctuary. And um, that can be your midweek pick-me-up. Um, where we'll have meditative music, um, a short message from Dr. Edward, and we'll also have some shared spiritual practice together. Um, so that's going to be wonderful, and we'll be doing that every Wednesday going forward, so you can uh, get plugged in during the week. Also, Dr. Edward is hosting an in-person retreat at the center uh, this coming Saturday, October 8th, from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m., and in it, we're going to explore happiness and success. Those are some great topics, and um, finding ways to release any of those things that get in the way of our joy and just cultivating insights into the power of our words. Um, so there will be practice, discussion, interaction, and there's even some optional chair yoga that if you come at 9 a.m., you can take part uh, take part in that William Abel, our facility manager, is leading. Um, if you don't want to do the yoga, you can just show up at 10 a.m. and take advantage of the workshop. So we've got limited seating for that. You can sign up today on our website by clicking the photo of the butterfly on a sunflower. And speaking of our wonderful Dr. Edward, did you know that every first Tuesday of the month, you can join him and the rest of our community in prayer on Zoom? Well, you can. Um, this is a wonderful way for you to share your love with the center and also to receive the gift of prayer. Um, so we do that every first Tuesday of the month, and this Tuesday is October 5th at 3 p.m. And you can get plugged in. Um, well, actually, I don't know which photo to click, but I know that there's a link on the website, and we'll make sure that that's there for you. Sorry. I, I was writing these last night, and um, apparently that didn't get added. So, full circle, conversations about how death informs living meets today from 1 p.m. until 2.30 in Finley Park at the Picnic Area 1 section today. So, uh, you can bring a chair, your hat, and water, and the title of our discussion today is Living for Full Circle, and everyone is welcome to that. All right. I love this one. Do you love holding babies? <laughs> Do you enjoy playing with toddlers? <laughs> all right. So for all of the aunts and the uncles and the grandpas and the grandmas and the moms and dads, um, we're working very hard to bring back child care in our nursery during our Sunday service. And we're looking for some dedicated volunteers who have experience taking care of young children and who are willing to serve one Sunday a month. If that sounds like you, uh, please stop by the information table on your way out or send an email to Linda Han if you're online and uh, share your contact information with us. Um, we'll get in touch with you about the next steps and how you can volunteer with that. And we're just really excited to be so close to bringing back this vital area of our youth and family program. And now I am super thrilled to announce, and you may have seen this on your flyers for the people who are here in person today, that um, we are going to be hosting a pumpkin carving party on October 30th at 12 p.m. right after our second service. And so this is going to be an um, event that's fun for all ages, and we encourage you to bring your kids and your grandkids. Um, we'll even buy a pumpkin for you ahead of time if you need one. You just have to let us know on the sign-up form. And even better, we're going to have some face painting, and we might get Dr. Edward to get his face painted. I don't know. <laughs> 
So um, click on the photo of the jack-o'-lanterns on our website. There's a sign-up page there where you can indicate if you're bringing your own pumpkin or if you'd like us to buy one for you. And we know it's going to be amazing. It'll be Halloween-themed, and we'll have all kinds of Halloween goodness here. All right, finally, I'd like to share a video from our practitioner, Pat Byrne, about her upcoming book study. Thank you so much for being with us today, and have a wonderful week. Hi. I'm Pat Byrne, and I'm so excited to facilitate a book study on Edwin Gaines' The Four Spiritual Laws of Prosperity. This book changed my life, and I have a great life. Edwin's definition of prosperity is a vitally alive body, relationships that are satisfying and work all the time, work that you love, and all the money you can spend. My intention for this book study is that everyone who participates will see prosperity in every area of their life. If you didn't read the book, come anyway. If you can't come to all five sessions, come when you can. If you don't want to pay anything, you don't have to. It's a love offering. I hope to see you every Monday in October, 6.30 through 8 p.m. via Zoom. Sign up by October 3rd on CSLSR.org. I know this book and its uplifting exercises will change your life. I hope to see you soon in the book study. Mm, thank you so much, Pat. Pat is one of those people who practices what she preaches. She's one of the most generous people I know. So you'll have a fun time, whatever happens, if you go to that meeting. It's time for us to close our service. Do keep in mind that after service prayer in person is available. North wing, outside the building, turn left. I know it's going to be tempting because it's sharing our bounty as well. You're going to have to make a decision. And there's also prayer available online at Zoom. And now won't you please stand saying, something wonderful is happening through me right now. It is this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body and life is in my affairs. I think it, I feel it, and I accept it. Just the way that it is, and just the way that it is not. Thank you, life. Know with me that you are never alone, that spirit is right where you are, that you have only to look within at any moment to know that you are guided, sustained, and empowered by a presence that expresses itself as you in this world. In deepest gratitude, let us live our lives accordingly so that in everything that we do and say and think, we honor this presence within, and so it is. Thank you for being here, and let us close with music. i see you again soon. Wherever I go, peace goes with me. I feel peace inside. Wherever I go, peace abides. I am a prayer for peace. I choose fear to release. Every moment love wakes up, peace is every step. Peace is every step. Peace is every.